Good evening everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Today on the kitchen table we're going to be looking at a new uh, accessory product. It's probably underdoing it a bit really. A new accessory product from Flytrex that makes one of their uh, recent impressive inventions um, completely plug and play with the Vision Plus or the P2 and removes the need for soldering at all which I know is something that put some people off. So we're going to have a look at it do a, uh, an installation for you to show you how easy it is and then um, and then yeah just talk to we'll also I'll just I'll introduce the concept of the Flytrex and what it is a little bit uh, for those who aren't aware before we go any further of course though we must um, we must lubricate the wheels of our thought with uh, with a beverage on the kitchen table uh, and today uh, is a tempranillo from Spain it is altos de hoja I apologize for my Spanish pronunciation a nice tempranillo and um, it's very good too so um, <clears throat> cheers ah right fly trucks fly trucks so yes for those who aren't aware this is a very brief potted history of what a fly trucks is and how they started and where they are now so if you want to just skip forward a little bit please do I won't be at all offended fly trucks um, uh, in essence, is a data logger for your multi-rotor. It doesn't have to be a Phantom, it could be other varieties as well. They have a list of compatible um, aircraft and controller types on the website. Um, but they've recently evolved from being just a data logger to something a bit more. Now, the first I got involved with Flytrex was when I first got the Vision and um, I wanted to, to, to use their existing product, which was this, the Flytrex Core Data Logger. You can see quite a, a little nifty circuit board, and it has a SD card reader, a, a little barometer, a thermometer, and some circuitry. And what it did was it sat in line with the GPS. So you would unplug your GPS, plug it into this, plug this back into the main board and then plug this into the fly trick. So it kind of piggybacked on the signals and it was powered by the um, by the internal voltage across there. And what it did was intercept the GPS signals, write them to the card. Then when you got back from your trips, you would take the card out, you would upload it to the fly tricks website. It would then convert it into a nice little overlay on a Google map and it would give you the ability to download it as a CSV file or as a Google Earth KML file and you could then mess around with it. People used it to put into uh, software like Dashware or Race Render and overlay the kind of uh, the dials and gauges on their videos so you could see exactly what it was doing and, and that sort of stuff. And I wanted it for, for basically logging. And we didn't know whether it would work with the Vision because the Vision had just been released. So I tried it and it did because it's basically a, a, a NASA flight controller. So this was the original Flytrex core. Um, then they decided to get a little bit, uh, a little bit clever and miniaturized it to the, this, the core 2 which is basically all the things that this has shrunk down to this, including having the little SD card on and a smaller cable, which meant that you didn't have to do what I had to do with this big boy, which is drill a little hole in the side of my original vision. You can see I protected the cables as I filed away a bit of the shell to get that through. This one could pop through a little, little hole, um, but it's the same principle. SD card, um, reads the data, all brilliant. Then last year they brought out this bad boy, the Flytrex Live, and the latest version is now a 3G. The original one was a 2G one and a 3G version. Um, now um, I got involved in testing this for them and we basically did the world's first live Flytrex live flight where I invited all of you guys and I think we had over 100 people at one point watching me fly live over an old Iron Age hill fort in Oxfordshire on... Um, the Flytrex website, you could see me going along. Um, and the reason why you could do that is because what they've done is they've taken the logging capabilities of this, but they've also added this, a SIM card. And what this, what the Flytrex Live does is it constantly f takes your uh, telemetry data and rather than storing it on a card and downloading it later, it sends it via the 3G network to the Flytrex servers where it stores it there and then for you but more than that because it's live or near live only a couple of seconds lag data it means that you can look at your progress on a computer or on a mobile device as well so if you are uh, your aircraft heads over the hills 
and it's got one of these fitted, which only weighs about 18 grams, 20 grams at most. It's got one of these fitted, it's constantly sending its position. No matter how far away it gets, as long as it's within a, as long as it's got power to the Phantom and a mobile phone signal, you can go find it. And this is great because the other option to date before this came along was to buy standalone GPS trackers for your aircraft, which have their own battery, their own uh, GPS receiver, and their own um, SIM, obviously. Uh, so you know you're looking at quite a hefty item. Um, so that's brilliant. Um, there's a 2G one. There's a th the new 3G one, which has some improvements. But, and here's the big downside, these lovely power leads end in some tinned connectors because this required you to solder it in. Now, if you're used to soldering, that's not a major issue on the Phantom 2. Um, if you've got like an F450, um, as I have, with a completely sort of open framework and no shell, it's, it's easy. Tuck those on and away you go. Um, if you had a Vision Plus, the main problem is the easiest and most obvious and sen most sensible place to solder these is where the main connectors come up from the battery compartment into the to the main board. The trouble is in the Vision Plus is that is buried underneath the Wi-Fi transceiver unit. Um, and there's all sorts of YouTube videos of people, you know, levering the unit up to get to it. And, oh, yeah, I, I can I can see why that would really put people off. And I think Flytrix could as well. So what I have got here, which we're going to install today and see how easy or not it is, is the new Flytrex CAN bus adapter. Now, what is that? I hear you cry. Well, CAN bus is a system of carrying power and data around the aircraft. The Phantom 2 has a CAN bus connector that looks a little bit like this one on the outside on one of the legs, and that's typically what you plug in your on-screen display or your, um, uh, if you want to use ground station, Bluetooth unit, that sort of thing, you can plug into the CAN bus. It carries power and data around the aircraft. Um, and if you have a Phantom 2, you can actually use this to click to your external CAN bus port with a standard CAN bus lead, and then you plug this um, into your Flytrex, and um, that's it, you've done it. No soldering on the P2 either. With the Vision Plus though, we don't have an external CAN bus and the one on the on the main board is not this type, it's this little thing. So what Flytrex have done is they have come up with a little unit that you can plug into the Phantom's main board with one little push. You can then attach another cable from here, come outside into the Flytrex and um, that's all you need to do to power it and to get the data. And you can therefore snip the leads off and that's it done. All it requires you to do, now I have to take the lid off your aircraft and press this into an empty slot on the main circuit board. So um, I'm going to do that and we're going to see if it is as easy as they claim and, um, and how long it sort of takes. Um, so we're going to do cut away in a minute and I'll move everything. This is, by the way, why the kitchen table is relatively clear today. It's because we're going to be doing some work. Um, We'll also talk about how to actually take the lid off. And if you've never done that before, it's very straightforward. We'll have a look at that too. So let's cut away now and um, have a look at installing this and we'll see if we can get it working. So here we are. Here's the aircraft and we're going to take the, the top off now. If you've not done that before, I did a video which I'll link to how to remove the screws and take the top off. Uh, it's up here. Uh, it was done a while back, but it's still pertinent to these aircraft. Uh, once you've done that and removed all the screws, we can go ahead and very carefully take the lid off the shell. Um, so be careful there's a cable inside connecting the GPS. So we carefully lift off. If you just wiggle it clear of the motors and you can now see the GPS cable to the main board here. Just simply pull it out and then we can put the lid away. And there it goes. So now we've got uh, a clear view of the inside. Um, for those of you who've not been inside before, should we do a bit of a tour? keep getting asked about that so so why not have a look so here's the the NASA this is the flight controller or the main control it's the brains of the aircraft and controls it in the air this is the Wi-Fi transceiver unit that uh, radiates out to your range extender here is the main circuit board here are the ESC's obviously the electronic speed controllers and motors on each arm and then you've got various things like the receiver tucked underneath and other bits and pieces here is what we want. Well, there's the plug where the GPS went in. If we move this cable out of the way, this little socket here, can you see CAN, short for CAN bus? That is the little socket that we are after. 
that's where we're going to plug in the Flytrex adapter. So here's the Flytrex adapter. Uh, it's nicely shrink wrapped so we don't have to worry any about uh, shorting anything out. This is the uh, standard CAN bus for use with the P2 and then you've got other bits and pieces and here is the little adapter that fits right in there. You can see it's got a little, a little lug on it here which means you can't put it in the wrong way and that will go in with a satisfying click. Then once you've got it the right way around, this is all we're going to do. Insert it in, push it home, there's a little click and it's locked. And that's it. Now, with the pack comes two of these leads. One is just a spare because they're quite thin, so we don't need that now. We'll put it to one side. The other one, it's um, the two plugs are exactly the same, and this goes between the adapter and the Flytrex Live itself. So we need to plug it in. Now, uh, they're sided. You can't put this in the wrong way around. They've got little lugs. You look, we'll try the wrong way around. Look, you just can't get it past. You won't damage anything. Just flip it over so you can see the pins upwards and insert it again. It's nice and firm and clicks sort of solidly into place. And that's it, done and dusted. Now I've spun the thing over, so we're now looking at the back. Um, that's just to show you this little hole here. Can you see that, just where the landing legs are? That's a very handy place to put the uh, cable through to the outside. Mm -hmm. um, now it's sized so that it should just fit uh, exactly through the hole, but obviously there are some other cables. So you might find it, it may need a bit of gentle persuasion. So it's just caught there, so I'm not gonna force it. Get a little screwdriver, very tiny tap, through it goes and then we're clear to be able to feed in the slack and we can just reach down underneath and pull it clear there it goes and that's going to be the bit that attaches the fly tracks and now we can mount the um the actual adapter board there's plenty of cable length you can mount it wherever you like um, you could fold the cable flat and attach it to the top of the wi-fi unit there if you wanted that seems reasonable. Um, you could put it down here or in any of the little gaps in the channels. You could, you know, wherever you like. Um, but for the purposes here, we're probably just gonna just gonna seat it there. You can use a sticky pad that comes with a pack if you want, or however, whatever method you prefer to attach it in place. Uh, now, here we go for the external mounting. This is the Thryflex GG. These cables, now, if you're going to use this adapter and plug it in here, you don't need these at all. You can snip them off and get rid of them. Um, alternatively, if you think you might use it on another aircraft, you might want to just coil these up, um, so tape them up, and obviously you know, make sure those leads don't touch anywhere and tape them up or snip them down for later. But um, we're not going to do that. So there we go. I've cut mine off. Uh, just to do little stuff. So what I'll do is before we fly, put some tape over there, just some electrical tape and keep it nice and out of the way. And there's the cable being plugged in. Um, we need to make sure that that's in firmly. On this side, we've got our a micro SD slot for firmware updates and things. And we've also obviously got the SIM. So we want to mount this so we can access both of those. And I found for me, the easiest way is to stick it right along the bottom here. And as you can see, look, that clears the battery compartment nicely. And again, fix it with the sticky pads or something similar. So here it is, all fully installed. Uh, and that's it. It will get power and data through that CAN bus um, and do its own thing, which is fantastic. Um, now, like I said, I've already linked in the earlier part of the, the, the video to um, the previous review of the full feature set of the live um, but obviously again pros to it are the light weight of it compared to a traditional a GPS satellite locator system with its additional battery um, the fact that it works with the Phantom's um, built-in GPS uh, the fact with this new one that it's using CAN bus so you're not introducing any extra uh, issues with the GPS by piggybacking onto the GPS lead, you're not having to even do anything, and of course the no solder option. Um, I, I know people that use this who have a problem with their camera and they uh, have not getting telemetry and they use one of these in lieu of, and that's not what it's designed for, but you know, you get the drift. So um, the other benefit, which I wasn't aware of until I looked into this, was because this is going through the CAN bus, there is additional data that's available to you if you're using it this way. So first of all, here's a, here's a shot from the PC, the desktop version, um, uh, looking at the, the browser onto the Flytrex site, and here is what you see. This is just a, a screenshot. 
of what you see when uh, when you, you're out flying uh, or when people are watching you. So you can see all the data down the left hand side. This was literally just in the garden. It was freezing. Um, I just went out. Let's just test it works. Let's come back in again. Um, and didn't do any flying. Um, but so this is all very familiar um, with all the data, satellite number of satellites, the voltages, the distance, etc., etc. One of the things you get now with this uh, going through the CAN bus is if you can see where the aircraft is, there's like a little red kind of paper dart symbol and a little. So you now actually get the compass direction because it's able to key into that data. So you'll now get an idea of what your orientation is as well. So this is looking like a very very full featured head up display here. Um, the other thing that, that works really well, and I'm glad they've done it now, is there is a companion app. Um, now, this is the Android one because I don't have iOS, but you can see a screenshot here from Android and suddenly it's all native. Previously, if you were doing it via your mobile phone, you had to go onto the Flytrix website and it wasn't really optimized for a small screen and it was, it was not a particularly pleasant experience. Now that there's an app, um, the data is presented on the screen in a sensible way and as you fly around um, it will zoom in and out. You can choose satellite view, Google satellite, Google Earth view like this one or you can choose a plain map view um, and it, it just it just works which is really nice. As I say they're on, it's on a, uh, iOS as well as Android but I don't have any iOS devices, I, I run all Android stuff so that's why we're looking at that. So there we go, in conclusion um, I think this is a really sensible thing they've done. One of the problems with the uh, with with attaching the uh, the live to the Vision Plus was the fact that the easiest and most sensible place to solder the power leads, which are now no longer required, to was actually underneath that Wi-Fi transmitter. And people, you know, I've seen videos of people prizing it up with, oh, just you know, not very good, or maybe even using one of the other contact points. And you know, if you understandably you don't want to be waving a hot soldering iron next to this rather expensive piece of equipment unless you're very comfortable and confident um, so this to me is just brilliant um, also see it also works with the p2 out of the box you just use that adapter and you use a standard CAN bus cable click click same principle no more soldering and you can get rid of these these wires so I can actually now transfer this one relatively easily um, over to a P2 if I wanted to using the using the adapter. So I think that's a really excellent addition to this one, and I know that that was one of the biggest hurdles that people with Vision Pluses had was the fact that you know waving a hot soldering iron near your new toy was was going to be a very risky undertaking for some people. Um, and now it's all been taken away. So there we go. So Flytrix Live. Now plug and play, no solder solution. You can buy it direct from Flytrex or from their network of dealers. I've put a link on the in the description to the Flytrex site. You can buy the Flytrex Live on its own if you do want to solder, or you can add this new adapter and be able to plug and play with the CAN bus, uh, both the Vision Plus and the uh, and the Phantom Two. Um, really really good i'm really pleased they've done that it really is so much easier um, and i really like the flytrix live you know i was one of the people sort of beta testing it for them we did the first live mass watched flytrix live flight and i really like the concept the fact that you get not only do you, does it automatically log your flights for you but you know if ever it disappears over the horizon as long as there's a mobile phone signal and this is still powered up this will tell you exactly where it is and remember its last location that it's sent home. So, yep, have a look at that. Um, any comments or questions, put them put them down below as usual. But I hope that was of interest to some of the people who've um, sort of mentioned that they like the idea of the, the live but not having to fit it in that sort of slightly more uh, intensive way. I hope it's uh, something that now you feel you might want to have a, have a look at. And uh, it's very good fun as well. Um, there's, there's something definitely very cool about, you know, getting somebody else watching your flight. Sad but true. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon back here on the kitchen table. And until then, cheers.